You see this sandwich? I put my arms on my sandwich. I'm about to hit the gym, be bigger than you forever. You'll never compare. In recent years, an underground revolution has been brewing, fueled by the desire for enhanced physique and performance. SARMs have emerged as a controversial loophole in the world of fitness, strength, and bodybuilding. And today, we're diving headfirst into this fascinating phenomenon. The development of SARMs can be traced back to 1990 at the University of Tennessee. Here, university researchers were working with researchers at GTX Inc., and they were looking for chemicals to treat muscle wasting and osteoporosis. Their goal was to create a compound that could have the benefits of anabolic steroids like testosterone, but without the androgenic side effects. They developed a compound called Osterine, which quickly made progress, and by 2007, they were in a phase two trial and had signed an exclusive license agreement with the pharmaceutical giant Merck & Co. But their progress had some significant road bumps on the way, and after struggling to pass their phase two trials, just three years later, the companies ended their exclusive deal in 2010. Nevertheless, GTX got back to the lab, and in August 2011, they managed to pass phase two trials, despite losing the support from their big pharma backers. But in August 2013, two years later, GTX announced that Osterine had failed in two separate phase three trials. Since then, no clinical trials have been conducted on Osterine, and the company reports investing around $35 million into the development of the drug. Since Osterine, many different SARMs have come out, each with their own different specifications. The interesting part is that SARMs aren't technically steroids because they don't have a four-ring structure. Rather, they are synthetic ligands that bind to androgen receptors. This is why they are called non-steroidal SARMs, and they serve as an attractive alternative to androgenic anabolic steroids because they have fewer limitations. In contrast to classic anabolic steroids, SARMs display high oral bioavailability. Non-steroidal SARMs also exhibit diminished androgenic activity because they are not metabolized to dihydrotestosterone by 5-alpha reductase. They are also not metabolized to estrogen by aromatase. Despite all of these seemingly huge advantages, clinical trials for SARMs have slowed down to a halt. Osterine is by far the most researched chemical with 11 clinical trials, but it still hasn't exited phase three trials. Ligandrol and Testolone have had one phase one clinical trial each, and Andorine has had none. But yet, they're all still being marketed, sold, and used fully legally. Despite the lack of passing a phase four trial and FDA approval, SARMs are marketed and sold online through a not for human consumption loophole label, which allows these compounds to skirt legal boundaries. Recently, we've seen a lot of these SARM questions, and I think it's because these, these gray market pharmaceutical companies are making pushes now with advertising. Introducing Bryce Hall, who's a TikTok influential with loads of young fans who does dances and hangs around with girls and stuff. And so he takes SARMs, he says he packed on 40 pounds of muscle and can't remember which ones he took. All natty right now. Yes? But I did take SARMs in the past. Which ones did you take? Uh, NFX. <laughs> Look at me, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> he did it, Oh yeah, I forgot. Right he hasn't admitted it. <laughs> in the era of social media and influencers, teenagers are now being marketed anabolics that they can legally buy on the internet without any regulation at all. These are these research chemical companies. What they do is they'll go through the the discarded uh, drugs that these pharma companies tried to get approved or did testing and then discarded them because they found out like oh this one causes heart disease <laughs> right this one causes liver cancer this one they'll find those discarded ones they'll create those ones because they do have effects but they also have crazy side effects not only are they repurposing flops but a lot of the time they're just outright lying a recent study tested 44 SARMs sold on the internet and compared their contents to the product labels. Among the 44 products marketed and sold as SARMs, only 52% actually contained one or more SARM. An additional 39% of the products contained another unapproved drug. And no active compound was detected in 9% of the products. These findings highlight an alarming lack of regulation and really show you what the quality of these products is. Nevertheless, if you actually end up getting real stuff, it does work. In clinical trials conducted thus far, pretty much all of the SARMs have proven to a significant level that they increase total lean body mass and in some cases also accompany a decrease in total body fat. And similarly to other androgen receptor agonists, they have shown to increase hematocrit and hemoglobin as well as increase the release of insulin-like growth factor 1. In the majority of the clinical trials, the side effects seem quite mild, with only transient elevation of liver enzymes, cholesterol, and insulin resistance. However, when the SARM goblins are taking SARMs, they're using doses that are 10 times the studied amounts. Thus, I assume that we can expect the same side effects, but to a more extreme presentation. 
And here's the other thing with SARMs. I know a lot of people who've taken real SARMs. And do they build muscle? A little bit. It ain't close to anabolic steroids. I know lots of guys who've taken both anabolics and SARMs and like, eh, you know, it doesn't do a whole lot. Like, anabolics are way more effective. I mean, if you want to take a drug that attaches to your androgen receptor to get give you steroid-like uh, effects, take steroids. And, and I'm not saying that lightly. Anabolic steroids have been around for a long time, and we know what they do and what they don't do. With SARMs, we don't know.